They say a pitcher can tell a thousand words. Well, I watched a video report that David Knight filed this morning. that's up on Infowars.com. Of the Pope being guarded by federal, state, local police, the military, but also the Border Patrol. Border, uh, of course, uh, existing is evil, according to the Pope and his United Nations One World Government doctrine. So we'll be playing that video report coming up. It's on Infowars.com. Very, very telling. So I guess they can be the new Swiss guard for his papal excellency. Uh, I was at the gym this morning for about an hour and a half. I walked in. I got an elliptical to warm up. And they had all the TVs on with uh, the Pope about to speak, with Obama speaking. And so instead of listening to music, I sat there and watched it. And it was obscene. The stunts. Oh, he didn't ride in a limo. He rode in a Fiat. That's just product placement for Italy. Fine. And oh, he's a man of the people. He doesn't want you to have air conditioning or running water. And that's moving forward. And it's not good to be prosperous. It's bad. He gave that speech in Cuba. How good it is to be poor. How, how it makes you a greater person. Well, statistically, that's not really true. Yes, if you're ultra rich, you tend to be more corrupt on average. Christ was absolutely right when he said it's easier for a rich man, or it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get into heaven. Of course, he was pointing directly at the gate, one of the smallest gates in Jerusalem that a camel would have to get on its knees to go through because... It's only about five feet tall. So see, all of this is in context. But just selling the idea that prosperity and wealth itself is evil is cultural warfare. It is class envy. It is classical cultural Marxism 101. And it's always from Warren Buffett or the Pope or David Rockefeller or the Queen of England. It's always some organization and some organizational leader controlling trillions and trillions and trillions of untold dollars and euros and land and banks and private jets and helicopters and palaces lecturing people that they can't have prosperity as if prosperity itself is inherently bad. The new prosperity is hating yourself, austerity, and not having anything while the elite are tax exempt and live in the equivalent of modern Elysium fields. You don't hear the Pope criticizing Saudi Arabia for its incredible separation of haves and have nots in a command and control economy where fraudulently the royal house has 95% of the wealth. 95%. You don't hear from the Pope that since we went into a collectivist world system, that the West has gone from having, depending on which sector or which area, roughly 5% of the population with maybe 30, 40, 50% of the wealth, depending on what era. Now it's 1% with more than half. So the more collectivist it gets, the more ultra-rich you get, and the more giant masses of poor you have, which is why you've always got monopoly men like Pope Francis engaging in class warfare saying, let's redistribute wealth because they want to control all the wealth because it's a weapon against their monopoly. I mean, look at these sickening headlines. White House compares president to the Pope. They say in the Washington Post and other publications that will that Obama is basking in his aura, the aura of Sauron, faithful facing wave of religious freedom challenges, and more. Stay with us. I'm going to do something today that I haven't done successfully in more than 15 years. I've been on air almost 21 years. And early on in talk radio, before I went to this television setup, I would have a big bank of calls directly in front of me with flashing lights and a screen right in front of my face where I would see the callers and then I would just go to one after the other. 
sometimes I'd rant for an hour or two hours. Sometimes I'd have a guest on for an hour or two hours. But most days, most nights back then, I was a talk show host at night. I would take sometimes 100 phone calls. And when I've attempted this the last few years, I've gotten a little bit better. I'll take 30, 40 calls if I really try during the whole show. But I think today we've got Peter Schiff coming on about his accurate prediction that they would not uh, up interest rates. We'll have open phones on economics with him. But I think it's important in the first hour and the third hour today to take a lot of phone calls on the Pope. What do you think of his visit? But so we can get to callers, just don't thank me. And just please get specifically to what you think of this Pope, what you think of this visit. Make your point. I'm going to go to the next person. That way we can get to all of you. It's not a slight on anyone. It's an act of respect that I would try to control the show more and actually go to your calls. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231 is the toll-free number to join us. 800 259 Oh, and one last proviso. First-time callers in the first few rounds, then we'll have a free-for-all uh, coming up in the second and third hour. 800-259-9231. We have a clip we're going to be playing. Pope Francis says climate change cannot be ignored, and he calls it air pollution, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. Two elements of the carbon cycle. Without those two elements, we would have no life on terra firma this planet, the third rock out from the sun in this solar system. We need water, we need sunlight, we need carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, water, sunshine, ladies and gentlemen, and of course oxygen. And they are attacking two of the four legs of the stool. And only abject, total, mindless ignorance could bring us to this point. I was in the gym this morning, and I was watching a whole bunch of people, because they had all the TVs for whatever reason, focused on the Jesuit socialist slash Marxist pope, clearly acting like he's this big, deep, smart person. And, 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 and sitting there in his white robes for his great purity. Selling dehumanization, deindustrialization, and genocide. Those aren't words. That's what he's doing. To usher in the one world government and its capstone, a global carbon tax. To track and trace every movement we make, to tax every movement we make and to totally control society and to selectively enforce the takedown of all human activity. Because if you tax what humans exhale, as the New York Times said a decade ago, a tax on breathing. And if you then tax water vapor saying it's evil and tell folks it's pollution, why, you can get away with anything you want. It really is unprecedented. In fact, let's just go to this clip. Uh, of the Pope praising President Obama for the bill they introduced yesterday to further accelerate the shutdown of what industry we have left. Let's understand something. Spain, Germany, the UK, Australia, and the United States, as well as Canada, are the world leaders in turning off carbon dioxide and water vapor. And we're also the world leaders in losing our industrial base. It's crippling us. China, India, Mexico, and 160 plus other third world countries make zero cuts and don't even put scrubbers on their power plants or factories and are spewing pure death particula into the air. And they'll do particulate tests sometimes on the news and go, yeah, there's a lot of lead, mercury, arsenic in the air. Must be our power plants. Must be our... They know full well the jet stream that comes in, goes right over China, picks all that up and dumps from the middle of New Mexico to the middle of Louisiana, and Central Texas is the prime center of the toilet bowl. In fact, I really ought to move my family out of here. 
talk about killing myself to live, and I love Texas. Everybody's like, oh, the allergies are horrible. I was born here, but now I'm sick all the time. I can't breathe. Because China literally uses us as a porta potty. I mean, the studies are there. Look up. Jet stream from China dumps over Texas. The prime quadrant, the center of the bullseye is Austin, Texas. Because the jet stream comes in low from 30, 40,000 feet and then dumps in point blank. It moves back and forth, but it dumps between New Mexico and Louisiana. And it's just moving that particular coil of it. It goes all around the world right over us. There's other dump points as well. I mean, the Pope said, let's restrict dirty power plants and listed the toxins and let's, you know, real, real, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a good Pope right there. Instead, he's like, the West must do more to cut the carbon emissions and the air pollution. And they use the public's ignorance. Texas always gets haze uh, when it rains in the late uh, spring. My dad's a pilot. He's been a pilot since he was 13. He grew up witnessing it in East Texas. And every time... You get up in the morning and it rained during the night, and by noon, there's a haze. They get on the news and they say, smog alert. That's why we need all these emissions controls. And the news will say, look at the smog. Yeah, it's smog. When you're in L.A. and there's mountains blocking that bowl. When the settlers showed up from Spain. They wrote about L.A. and talked about the Indians, the natives' fires, creating a, a haze in the sky. But I don't want to digress off into all of this. Um, it's just amazing to know that what the Pope's pushing is a death sentence. And everything he says is a lie, basically. He comes out and says, I'm not a leftist. But he's going to meet with America's prisoners in prisons and basically say, free them. But he wouldn't criticize Castro and all of his political dissidents, upwards of a half million that are in prison. And they've shut down a bunch of subways and things. You know, he would have flown by helicopter and said, I don't want to create a traffic jam. I'm going to fly by helicopter. But instead, he did the whole big motorcade and shut everything down. But don't worry, he did the stunt of riding in a Fiat. Look, he's a little guy. He's normal. And he was protected by the Border Patrol. They've got them off the northern border now to protect him, which is fitting because he doesn't want us to have a border. But he lives behind 35 and 40 foot and 50 foot walls around the Vatican City. He's got a giant fortress full of Swiss paramilitary guards, hired mercenaries. The Vatican is rumored to have hundreds of trillions of dollars of assets. They admittedly own more property than anybody in the world. Are you see the Vatican selling any of that property, quote, give it to the poor? No. It's all meant to sell austerity to us, to train us to be abject slaves. Yeah, and I apologize. You know, I say 35, 50 foot walls. At some point, the Vatican walls are over 100 feet tall, as TV viewers can see right there. That, at that point, it's well over 100 feet tall. Tax exempt. And I got to sit here and hear this slime bag. That's what he is. Of a captured Catholic church, taken over by the pedophiles, blackmailed by the left, and now that they've taken it over worldwide, you're hearing total and complete Worship by the media, a basking in his glow, an angel, Christ-like. Oh, he's so wonderful. He's calling for one world religion. Oh, my gosh. Let's go to the sickening clip. Here it is. As the son of an immigrant family, I'm happy to be a guest in this country, which was largely built by such families. During my visit, I will have the honor of addressing Congress, where I hope, as a brother of this country, 
to offer words of encouragement 